Okay, welcome to my first edition of my board game video notebook. Um, with this series, I hope to show you some games, show you how they play, um, give you a brief uh, look at the game and its components and the game system and just some personal comments. Um, first of all, a little biography. Um, I'm 49 years old, have a lovely wife, a wonderful boy, a nice house, and pretty much everything that a person could need. Um, very middle class, live in the middle of uh, Kansas, lived here all my life, been an av been an avid war gamer since oh, the early 90s and that's pretty much all you need to know um, today's game we're going to look at is a small game by MMP Multiman Publishing it's called Target Arnhem Across Six Bridges and I'm giving you an overview of the game map and the initial setup the game is not very complicated the rules are only, let's see, uh, well, about four pages, three, two, I don't know, about two pages actually, and then there's some designer notes on the back, as well as a uh, unit um, diagram to show you what the numbers and symbols mean, and all that stuff. So, this two player game simulates the entire Operation Market Garden campaign. Each turn represents one day and each hex is about 4.4 miles. One player commands the Allied forces, the other player commands the Germans. Um, the values on the counters. The first number is combat strength and the second number is units endurance value. There is no movement uh, allowance printed on the counters. That is determined um, uh, by the movement impulse. Um, other than that, the game outline sequence of play is the game proceeds by turns. Each turn is made up of the following phases. One, the adjustment phase. Two, the Allied first tactical impulse. Three, German first tactical impulse. 4. Allied Second Tactical Impulse 5. German Second Tactical Impulse 6. Allied Third Tactical Impulse 7. German Third Tactical Impulse Okay, during the adjustment phase both armies' supply points are increased and out of supply units are dealt with. Um, during the three Allied Tactical Impulses phases 2, 4, and 6 above only Allied units can perform tactical actions. Likewise, during the three German tactical impulses of 3, 4, and 7, only German units can perform tactical actions. So, we will proceed. Special rules for the setup. Uh, the historical scenario lasts nine turns. After the ninth turn, if there's an Allied unit in Arnhem, and if there are no German units on the Red Road, that runs from Arnhem to the southern board edge, the Allies win. Otherwise, the Germans win. I don't know if you can see here, but this is the red highway that leads on up to Arnhem and beyond. Uh, can't think of what they call that. Um, I can't remember the highway, what they call that in the campaign, but I'm sure it'll come to me later. Okay, the Germans are set up. The Allies are set up. I have used a semi-historical um, approximate location of the actual pair of troops supply markers. Um, I had to adjust the 101st since theirs would have landed on an enemy unit and uh, subsequently destroyed. And that just isn't going to work. So, the game begins with the adjustment phase of turn 1, after which comes the Allied first tactical impulse. And... In this particular case, normally 
paradrop units don't get any other um, tactical impulse. They're using that one for movement. However, in the special case on the initial um, pair drops, uh, the two airborne units of the, ally of the allied player's choice may take an extra tactical action in addition to the pair drop landing. Okay, well, we will start with the adjustment phase. Um, each unit that are out of supply receive one point of damage. The German Wehrmacht receives supply points equal to one half of a die roll. Round fractions up, and German SS and Allied Airborne Divisions each receive one supply point. And I don't think I don't think the units on the um, the Red Road have to worry about supply. Yes. So, so in that case, I'll go ahead and. Uh, Get a little close up of the game, so you don't have to strain your eyes and stuff. And we'll be back with the start. Okay, welcome back. Um, we're going to begin the first turn here of um, Target Arnhem. Um, like I said, the airborne units have landed and they will get one extra tactical impulse um, but first we had to go through the adjustment phase and um, allocate well accumulate I guess I should say um, supply points uh, all SS and all allied airborne units receive one supply point per turn 30th uh, 30th Corps, which will be coming down the road, do not have to worry about accumulating supply points. And the regular German Wehrmacht will get theirs decided by a die roll. So we'll roll a die, cut it in half, and round fractions up. I well, can't get better than that. It's going to be three supply points. Okay. Now, I'm going to try and get a shot here of the north part of the map. I will preface uh, <coughs> this and all other videos that I will not be playing the most optimum game. I will not be using the best strategy and I will make numerous mistakes but I'm going to have fun and hopefully you'll be entertained and perhaps learn something or just shake your head sadly and walk away um, okay first we're going to worry about the actual airborne units which get their extra impulse first wing first one having been used to land uh, airborne units. Adjust this camera just a little bit more. I know that's probably not the best, but anyway, we are on the September 17th turn and we're working on the first impulse, as I've said numerous times now. Alright, um, well, it's apparent from the supply rules that the airborne units do not want their supply depots to be overrun or else they'll have to supply the trace supply down the highway to the hex at the bottom of the map. So to leave this hex right now would not be probably the best thing. Uh, let's see, Arnhem, defenders are dug in, that's what the little pick and shovel is for, but it's just like a little garrison, and these are part of the 10th and 9th SS, and they're in pretty good defensive terrain, uh, combat I believe is optional, um, yeah, I think it's optional. 
if I learned it, learn anything different, I'll let you know. Okay, so I don't think, well, actually it might be, let's see, let me check the of control real quick, or moving adjacent anyway. Let's see. I'm going to use some of the errata here. It might tell me a little bit better. Movement rules state that a unit must stop a becoming adjacent to an enemy unit. What if a unit begins a tactical impulse already adjacent? May the unit move away from the enemy unit into a hex that is not adjacent to any enemy units. Move away from that hex into a hex that is adjacent to a different enemy unit. Or move from its current hex into a different hex adjacent to the same enemy unit. Answer, all those things are valid. Note that it says a unit must stop move, must stop upon entering. It didn't begin moving in the first place. How could it stop? Okay. Alright, well, that's pretty ambiguous. So using normal movement, units can move two hexes or cross an unbridged canal. However, units must stop upon entering a force or becoming adjacent to an enemy unit unless separated by an unbridged river hex side. Units may not cross a river hex without using a bridge. German units may move off board from a hex adjoining the off board area. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be legal, but anyway. Um, this British unit is going to attack the garrison at Arnhem as its second impulse. Maybe I should go ahead and do all first impulse uh, activities by... Eek, sorry. Um, well, by the sequence of play. So the Allied first tactical impulse. That would have been when all the paratroopers were dropped. Now we are ready for the German first tactical impulse. Um, they don't get any reinforcements. The first reinforcements will be coming in on turn two. Let's see. Sorry for the jumpiness. I'm using a very old tripod. Oh, but with any luck, you don't get any motion sickness. Okay, well, they don't get any reinforcements, so I guess the Germans' best bet is probably to counterattack the British up north. They don't really have the strength to do much else. go back up north here. Sorry for the jumpiness. Okay. Well. Alright. So, they do attack. The Germans, that is. Um. What is stacking in this game? Three units. So if I move the 9th SS into here and then try to attack the British Air, first airborne there, we could overrun their supply depot and that would um, pretty much cripple them. So. That would be in a second impulse to attack. But let's do that. We're going to move him one hex using normal movement. And I think that's going to be it for the first German impulse. I wonder if that recon unit should fall back across the river. Eh, I don't know. Anyway, mm. okay, but well, we'll proceed to combat on the first tactical impulse. 
Add up the combat strength of the units participating in the attack. Compare it to the combined defender's combat strength. Figure out the ratio. Round fractions down into the defender's favor. Roll a die and cross index the result against the odds. Okay. Modifiers. Anybody attacking across the canal or unbridged river? No. Concentrated bombardment. Um, the Allies must have at least one in supply. The Germans could, but that'd be their SS. Um, guess you can do it any time. If the defender is in a force or city, shift the column one to the left. Um, not in a force or a city. Let's see where we're at first. Okay. Looks like it's going to be probably 1 to 1 is my guess. 6, 9 to 4. Oops, I wasn't going to attack him. Uh, 9 to 4 and clear is going to be a 2 to 1. It's in clear. Should be no modifiers on the terrain effects chart. is down here. Bridge clear. Let's see is I know you're probably not gonna see it, but here's clear terrain, combat no effect, movement no effect. So to return back up here. Man, sorry for that jumping. Um uh, looks like a two to one 9th SS, 10th SS versus the um, Allied uh, Airborne Unit. I think I will use a concentrated bombardment, which allows me to spend one supply point to shift uh, the CRT to the right. So, the SS will go down to zero. And that could be a mistake, especially if they take uh, negative combat. So there are no there are no die roll adjustments. We're going to be on the two to one shift one to the three to one, and the result is a five at three to one. Ah, uh, looks like a one one. So both units, let's see here, let me double check. Um, the number on the left to the attacker, the number to the right to the defender. When there are multiple units affected, the owner chooses how to distribute the damage, but may not assign damage to a unit beyond its endurance value. Excess damage beyond what it would take to destroy all of one side units in a battle are ignored. If the defending units in a hex are completely destroyed, the attacker may, if he wishes, move any number of the attacking units into the hex previously occupied by the defender. And I'm going to go back here a second. When there are multiple units affected, the owner chooses how to distribute the damage, but may not assign damage to a unit beyond, uh, beyond its endurance value. Excess damage. Okay. I'm not sure I understand that, but anyway. Take a damage. That's basically just affects his endurance, which he has plenty of, it looks like. Okay. Since, oops, sorry. I think we'll take it out of, well, they're both the same. I think uh, the 10th SS will take the hit. Because it doesn't say there's two hits, just one, so I'm assuming only one of those units will take a hit. So, both sides have one unit that have taken a hit on their endurance, so 
that was that for the German first tactical impulse. When I come back, we'll be doing the Allied second tactical impulse, and this is where their airborne units can perform. Their airborne units can perform their um, second tactical impulse on the first turn. All right, Let's send this one up. And we will return um, shortly. So, thanks for watching. Till next time.